Gotta impress the ladies with your incredibly sharp axe edges. Man, look at that. Camp 13 back for the final part. Let's get that sheath off. We've got to finish that edge. So during the whole restoration process, um, I did create a new edge, but it was just with a rasp only. It's a nice short edge on this on this one because the uh, the cheeks are th so thin. It only requires a short bevel. But you can see we've got a real heavy burr on there, right along here. That dark strip right at the edge is actually a burr, and uh, it's quite coarse. So we're going to use. Uh, I'm going to start it off with the rasp, just remove that burr, clean up the edge again because I've uh, done a nice bit of working on it and has a couple little nicks and stuff. I'm going to tidy it up and then we're going to move on to some other stages. Just got it here on a junk of wood. I'm going to just clean up this by doing all push cuts into the edge of this axe, keeping with uh, the bevel I put on there earlier. Not using a lot of pressure here, but just enough. At this point with, with the rasp, you're more just trying to create the shaping ridge. You're not refining it. Just with the rasp you can put a lovely edge on an axe. Flip it over so we got that burr now on this side. I don't know if you can see it reflecting along there. How I like to remove that burr and get on to a nice edge is I move over to my carver on them stone. This is actually a vintage stone. I believe you've seen it on the channel before. Let's uh, let's move over to that stone. I think we've got a good enough edge here now with the rasp. Here's the carver on them made by. Uh, a company at Niagara Falls, Canada. Canadian Carborundum Company. This is a beautiful little stone. It's a combination stone. It's got the original box, which I'm super excited about. But look at this. Very tough stone. I really like it. It's cold here today, guys. Got the gloves on. Working away. It's just lovely, though. The sun is out there. I'm just going to start with circles on the on the coarse side of the stone. I'm just going to remove that burr and take out some of the rasp marks. So now I'm going to be switching over to the finer side on the stone. You notice the difference in sound there now. This side is real fine, has a nice slick, uh, nice slick texture. Sounds so good when it's working, but it actually cuts quite quickly. Now the next step after this, I'm going to move over to, I don't know if any of you have seen the video, I'll link it here, the rooster method. You'll see what that is in a minute. Just removing again each time, remember to move, remove the coarser scratches from the the stage prior. So the rooster method uses a sanding pad like this with a foam backing. You uh, work up in different grits of paper and uh, the foam backing gives it a very mild convexing. The thicker the foam obviously the, the greater the convex. This is fairly thin and dense foam. It's quite hard so it's not going to convex much but it just lets you... Uh, I'm starting off with uh, very worn out 100 grit and you want to work with the edge you don't want to pull directly away you want to sort of wrap the edge and that eliminates you having actual stropping strokes which just keeps hauling the burr out off the edge by doing this you're kind of taking the burr with you every time can get an idea. Let me give you a picture of that texture there now. Off the 100 grit. See it's very clean. Just 
gives a nice finish. I'm going to do the other side and then move on to a four. This is not picky with the grit to use. Obviously if you start with a 1500 grit, you're probably never going to get rid of the deeper scratches. But by starting with the by starting with this 100 grit, it very quickly takes out those deeper grooves. Here now I'm moving on to the 400 grit paper. This is somewhat worn again. It's because I'm cheap and like to use every piece of sandpaper until it's completely gone. But keeping with the same type of strokes here, if you move in incremental grips, ugh, can't talk. If you move up in stages like this, stages that aren't too far apart, like a 100 to a 4, and then a bit higher and a bit higher, uh, you have to spend a lot less time on each step because it's so effective. This 400 removes the grits of the one, 100 grit so quickly. It's done just that fast. This 400 will finish with a real nice bite to the axe edge. I'll take it a little further, but uh, the 400 I do recommend is a real nice grit paper and uh, it's a real clean edge to finish with if you wanted to. Easily finish with 400 and have a very efficient axe. That is a very keen edge there now. Again, I'll try to give you a look at the texture. That's a 400. So now from wrap 400, we're going to move up to a 1500 grit paper, which again is a little bit worn. But uh, if you buy good quality sandpaper, you'll get a good bit of use out of it. It'll hold on quite a while. And from the 400, a 1500 actually works very fast. Again, it takes nothing. Notice those few strokes. And look at that edge already. From what you just saw, that is now reflecting. Just those few strokes. I'll clean it up a little bit more. This is going to be one nice edge. So again, that's the edge with 400. This is quite flat, pretty dull. Now watch. See the difference there? Look at that. Pretty fast, doesn't get much better than that. So, right off 1500 grit paper, that is the edge, and it is wiry sharp there now. That'd be just a lovely edge to take in and work with. Of course, we're going to take it a little touch further. Man, look at that! That is nice, and that polish backed up against that black pitted head. That is one lovely restoration, if I do say so myself. I got a little bit of compound here, a little bit of paste, and my paddle strap. Just throw a little bit of compound on there. There's lots worn into the leather, but of course that kind of gets smoothed over after a little while. This compound is just, it's going to be finer than that 1500 grit paper. And, uh, this is unnecessary, of course, but it will improve the edge. Can't argue with that. It may not create a noticeable difference in cutting performance, but if you're doing a fine task like 
let's say trying to shave a few hairs off your your leg or something this stropping would make the difference between not being able to shave hairs and being able to shave hairs and of course when you're trying to impress people right right gotta impress the ladies with your incredibly sharp axe edges Nah. The other guys are the only ones you're looking to impress. Because <laughs> the ladies do not care. So that is the edge. Let's see if we can get some light on it. Here we go. Wow. That is beautiful. Now, what I like to do is just have it is after stropping with a strop lace with compound which is a little bit uh, with compound it'll cut faster than just a plain leather this is just sort of a, a polished or a finished leather this is just perfectly smooth here no compound so when I'm finished stropping with a compounded strop I'll increase the angle just a touch and sort of smooth over that edge with this uh, with this finishing strap. This is my what I would call my finishing strap. Not too many strokes but just enough. I do find you can argue it if you like but the last few strokes with this strap just right on that perfected edge just gives that that teeny little bit more performance this would take it from if the if the compounded strap made it clip hairs off your legs this one would make it just that bit smoother just buttery smooth you probably noticed that I have a few patches on my legs already let's test that edge trying to be very gentle this is a lengthy axe. It's a little bit heavy on the head to control like this. <laughs> Trying to very lightly. <laughs> that is a sharp egg. That is a sharp axe. How about some action footage? Chop me down like an old oak tree